Yeah. Man, t- because I was talking about your gym, I-, I just like to bring this stuff up because I- a lot of newer people in jiu-jitsu, the people that just started within the last few years, they really have no idea as to the, like, the, the the amazing facilities that they have, you know, because a lot of times they probably go in there and look and like, they just kind of, it, this is normal now, right? It's normal to yeah. have these nice gyms. What was it like your first place, the first place that you ever trained at? So you found, you got into, you know, martial art, mixed martial arts, whatever you were doing. And then you were like, okay, I'm going to start training for this stuff. What was that first facility like? Okay. So I, you know, I started when I was in college and I went to a quad day where they, all the sport clubs have their, uh, their stands set up where you can, they give you literature and they sell you why their style of dragon Kung Fu is the best or whatever it is. And, uh, I found this one, um, called Goshen Jitsu and it was pretty raw and we, it, they had it at the, uh, it was really funny because on the, in the rec center at, um, the university of Illinois, they had a room called the combat room. And it is a padded room wall to wall. Like the whole wall, the walls are padded. The floor is a wrestling mat. And this is where Goshen Jitsu took place and a lot of the other sport clubs. But the guy who ran it was a little, I I still love him to this day. Um, They call him Joker. He's a, he's a doctor, but he's also a very sadistic um, martial arts practitioner. And um, his, his sport club did a little bit of everything. We did submissions, strikes, um, you know, throws all wearing a gi. Um, and it was, so it was, it was kind of like he, he, when he took over, he kind of mixed the traditional club roots with him, his interest in MMA mm-hmm. and just started like kind of just combining everything. And so that was my start. So in the combat room at the rec center at the university of Illinois, in this padded room. And then, um, he, um, he just noticed that I didn't mind being his Guinea pig. And he would literally like after every session for about 30 minutes, I just let him beat the shit out of me <laughs> and like try things on me. And then, um, and then after that, that led to, he's like, Hey man, you seem to really like the ground stuff. He's like, let me introduce you to my jujitsu coach. And that's when he introduced me to Jack McVicker. And, um, and then I fell in love with jujitsu from there and it kind of spiraled. Where was Jack? Uh, for those that live in the Midwest, Jack's like, he's been around forever. Like he's one of the OGs. Yeah. Um, where was he training yes. at, at the, uh, at the time? So he had um, two clubs. He ran one in Terre Haute, Indiana, mm-hmm. and he and then ran one in Champaign. And oddly enough, he still to this day still makes that drive. Like every other day, he drives. It's like an hour and forty minutes, and he drives one day. One day he's in Terre Haute where he lives, and the next one he's in in uh, in Champaign. Well, um, but the way I met him when when Joker, um, his name's Mike, but he goes by Joker. He he um, he introduced me to him. He just did a one day a week at the rec center. He goes, hey man, come look. He's gonna he's gonna do Jeet Kune Do and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He brings out some pads. We did some stick stick work, some knife work, and then we did some grappling. That was one day a week on Fridays. Well, then he would always I would see Jack always bring these guys with him to demonstrate, and these guys were like badasses. I remember looking at him like I want to be one of those guys. I want to be the the demo guy that gets beat up, but they look badass. You know what I mean? So I was going to his Friday once a week sport club thing. So I started talking to him like, well, how do I get to your like main academy, or how do I come to your main academy? He's like, well, it costs this much, and you know you got to drive over here, and it obviously it was off campus. And at the time I couldn't afford it, but I was like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna work. I want to do this. So I'm going to, I'm, I picked up extra shifts. I had a, I had a part-time job while I was in college, um, to help pay for everything. And I'm like, I'm just going to work more. And I did. And then like a semester or two later, I started going at his regular facility and training more like regularly, like, you know, three to four times a week. Mm. What was your background? Like the, what drew you into this weird padded room where you got beat up? Like what was yeah. your desire to do that? It, it is weird. People ask me all the time, and I probably explain the story on a, on a million podcasts. And, and, and it's like, it's, I, I don't really know how to put a finger on it. I just, when I was growing up, I was from a really small town to, to describe it to you. Um, you know, when people make fun of towns that like their, their main sport is cow tipping, um, that's like my town. And um, it's like, it had a thousand people in it, didn't even have a single stoplight. I had 55 people in my graduating class. So super tiny. And, um, but growing up, I was always like watching Van Damme movies and Steven Seagal. And, um, I always tell people, cause this is true. I probably still have them in a box somewhere. Maybe I threw them away, but I would go to Litchfield, Illinois, which is the neighbor, neighboring town. And I would go to their family video and I would buy their used UFC VHS tapes. So like ultimate Japan, ultimate Brazil, I'd buy them. You could buy them for a couple bucks and I'd take them home and watch them. 
And I was just always like, I never thought like, man, I want to be in the UFC. I just always thought I wanted to be able to kick people's ass and say I was cool, you know what I mean? So that kind of, I didn't have the outlet because I'm from this, you know, small cow tipping farm town. And so once I got to college, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And that's really kind of how it started. Man, did you see, uh, I'm sure you have, did you watch Bloodsport growing up? Of course. So, so when you were saying this, <laughs> I, I know, I know. It, it, but <laughs> some of these young people, right, they haven't watched Bloodsport. So I have this theory that Bloodsport is part of the reason I am who I am to this day. Sure. Because, because I, you know, granted, it's all BS. It's not real. But, like, you know, they said it was. And so it made me think it was. And so I watched that, that show. And I used to just, I would watch it every time it came on reruns on, like, TBS or whatever. Well, so I got a message. So in, I, I think on one of the podcasts I was talking about the fact that, like, Bolo Young, like, his pecs where he would, like, flex them. Yeah, yeah. I was, like, trying to bang out push-ups, trying to get my, my chest muscles. And I remember when I was in, like, <laughs> I was a freshman in high school, and I remember I could flex my right pec for the first time. <laughs> I would sit there in class and just constantly flex it because I was, like, it, a dream came true. Well, one of, the, one, of the, one of the guys listened to it, and I forgot your name. I'll make sure I give you a shout-out on the next podcast. He sent me. A uh, so he know so his son um or his one of the guys that trains at his gym is Bolo Young's son. What? So no way. let's get that dude on the podcast. He sent me <laughs> a autographed like picture of Bolo Young oh. from Bolo Young. Oh, I was man. like, dude, awesome. that's awesome. Boom. That'd be great if you guys could get on the show and do like a, a peck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Who, who's got the best best peck peck flexing in the game? Who is it? Oh, I don't know, man. There, there's some, Arnold. I don't know. There, there's Arnold's some, pretty good. There's some big fellows you know, out there if now. You know, if you know the answer to this, though, I might lose respect for you. Yeah, that's all right. Right, right. <laughs> He's been watching.